So, hello and welcome to lesson 13 in our study of scientific computing, where we are studying the Python programming language. So, in this lesson, we'll be talking about the NumPy model in Python. Alright, so numerical Python. So, we'll be talking about this, these things in this video. We are going to have a brief description on NumPy and learn how to create NumPy arrays, um, vectors and matrices. Then we will learn um, the reason why NumPy arrays are chosen over Python list and learn how to use array generated functions to generate arrays. And we will then learn some functions on the arrays so let's take a brief description so numpy numpy means numerical python it is used for creating multi-dimensional array the numpy package or model is used in almost all numerical computations using python so it is a package that provides high performance vector metrics and higher dimensional data structures for Python. And it is implemented in C and Fortran. So when calculations are vectorized, performance is very good. Okay. So that was a brief description about the NumPy package or Moodle. So now let's learn how to create NumPy arrays. So there are about three ways one can create a NumPy array, but in this lesson, we'll introduce you to two of them. And the two ways of creating a NumPy array are using a Python list, and we can also use functions that are dedicated to generating NumPy arrays, such as arrange, there should be just one R, okay, length space, and the others. So, now let's learn how to use Python list to create NumPy arrays. So, note that before using NumPy, you first have to import the model. That is if you have NumPy already installed on your system. Okay, so if you don't have NumPy, then if you are using Linux operating system, you can open your terminal. Then if you're also using Windows, you can open your command prompt, okay? So let me open mine and type pip pip install numpy, okay? So you have to be connected to the internet so that it will download it online for you. So after typing pip install numpy in either your terminal or your command prompt, then you hit the enter key on your computer and if you don't have it, it will download it for you. So since I have it, it said requirements already satisfied, right? So if you already have it, then you can go ahead with this lesson. But if you don't have it, then you have to install it first, okay? So the commonest way to create a NumPy array is to use a Python list. And we would illustrate how to create vectors and matrices using this concept. Okay. Alright, so I want to create a vector. And the elements of the vectors or the vector are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Okay. So the first thing I have to do is to import NumP or NumPy as NP. And the most important thing here is importing the NumPy. The as NP here is just a convention we used. Okay. So if you have been following our lesson, we said the function of the as. We mostly use it when we are importing models, okay? And mostly if the models have longer names, we want to shorten them by providing an alias. So we could have just said import numpy. But when we say import numpy as np, that means that whenever you want to use numpy, instead of typing that five letter word numpy, we just use np. You know, that makes it a bit simple right so mostly that's when we use the um function as okay to import models 
So we see vector is equal to np dot array. So instead of calling numpy, we'll call np dot array. Then whenever you use the dot array, you open parentheses and you close parentheses. And whatever element you want to be contained in that array has to be in this form. So you see it is a list, right? We have a list one, two, three, four, five. So that's the argument for the array. So if we should call the vector, then you could see that we have the vector one, two, three, four, five. So that's how we create a vector in NumPy, okay, and um, in Python. So now let's learn how to create a matrix. So you see here, I imported NumPy as rain, right? So you can import it as anything, but the commonest one uses the NP. Then I'm doing an assignment here that matrix is equal to rain dot array. So you see, I open parentheses, I close parentheses, then this is a list, right? Which contains what list? So it's a list of lists. Okay, so um, when we are typing matrices in Python using a NumPy model, right? We do it row wise. So you can see that this is the first row, that's one list, one, two, three, the second row, four, five, six, the third row, seven, eight, nine. So if we should call the matrix. You can see that we have it here, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Okay, so that's how we also create matrices in Python using NumPy. So you, you, you've realized that we mostly the array, the np.array, it takes a list as an argument and makes it an array. So why don't we then use the list directly, but we prefer to use an array? So why do we prefer NumPy arrays over Python list? So these are some of the reasons. Python lists are very general. Okay, they are very general. They can contain any kind of object. If you realize that, you can have a list which can contain strings, floats, complex numbers at the same time, and they are dynamically typed. So as you are typing it, Python determines the data type for the objects okay then they do not support mathematical functions such as matrix and dot multiplication so when you have a list you can do or perform some mathematical operations on them so that's the reason why we always prefer the numpy arrays over the python list and other reasons are because the numpy arrays are um so this is statically typed not statistically okay statically typed and homogeneous. So what we mean by that is that you are the one who determine the data type and homogeneous because you contain one data type at a time. Okay, that's homogeneous. You can't mix them. Then the type of element is determined when the array is created and NumPy arrays are memory efficient. So note, you cannot miss data types in NumPy array as in the case of a Python list. If you miss them, then you have a different data type for it. So we have learned how to use Python list to create NumPy arrays. Now we are going to learn how to use array generating functions to create NumPy arrays, okay? So why do we have to sometimes employ the use of these array generating functions to create arrays? So for larger arrays, it is impractical to initialize the data manually using explicit Python list. Instead, we can use one of the many functions in NumPy that generate arrays of different forms. So some of the functions are shown here, right? So we'll talk about the arrange function, right? So the arrange function in NumPy is used to create an array which has a range of numbers. So it takes three arguments, start, stop, and step. So the start is the number you want to start from, the stop is where you want to end, and a step is like the interval you want between them. Okay, so this is an example. So I'm importing NumPy as Boedu, right? Then it will be so instead of calling NumPy, I'll call Boedu. Okay, so that's my name, and I'm hyping my name. So it will be Boedu dot the function, which is arrange, right? So we start at one, we end at 20, and there should be a step of two. So if you should do that, it will create this array for you without you having to type okay 
and one thing i have to note is that the last element is always not included okay and i think that'll be very visible in this second example so we we'll do that arrange we want to start at one and at ten step of one but you could see that we didn't have ten in this array okay so when you use the arrange function the last element is always excluded okay so you should be practicing these then we have the link space okay so the link space function in numpy retains evenly spaced array calculated over the interval start stop right so we start and we stop so for this function the endpoints are included right and they can optionally be excluded so for example you see we have we are importing numpy as np we are saying np.link space so we are starting from zero and ending at 10 and we want to create 25 evenly spaced numbers between these intervals 0 and 10 that's what the link space does so you can see the output here to 0 to 10 and we have 25 evenly spaced numbers between that interval with the endpoint inclusive okay so that's the link space so it created an array which starts from 0 and ends at 10, but the interval was evenly spaced to have 25 elements. So we have random, right? So the random function randomly generates uniform random numbers in the closed interval 0, 1 of an array of a given dimension. So an example, from NumPy, we are importing random, and we said random.rand33. So what this means is that to create a 3 by 3 matrix, of random elements and the elements are always within this closed interval right and you can see that it has generated that for us okay then we have the dark right so the dark function creates a diagonal matrix okay so import numpy as string rain dot dark one two three four so it will create a diagonal matrix with the elements here as the diagonal entry so you can see we have one zero zero 0, 020 0, 0, 0, 0. so when you want to create a diagonal matrix then you can use this function okay then we have zeros so zeros it creates a matrix with all its entries as zero so example import numpy as np np dot zeros right four three so it means create a four by three matrix but all the entries are zero and you can see that's what we have here then we have ones. So it's used to create a matrix with all its entries as what well, zero. You can also create a vector if you give it a dimension of a vector, right? So you can see that here. Right. So now let's look at the functions and the sub packages in NumPy. Okay. So I'm coming to import my numpy so i've imported numpy right so this numpy has a lot of functions in its model right so to get the function is its model you can say a is equal to d a i r numpy so this will let me know all the sub direct um sub models and function that we have in what numpy okay so if i should call a it will tell me everything so these are all the functions there's several functions there are a lot that we have in numpy but we can't learn all of them right so mostly when we are learning we decide to learn just a few of them you learn the ones that you need you see there are a lot right let's try to know their number so we use the len function so it tells us that we have 606 functions in what's the numpy and can we learn all of them no so we learn the um the ones which are of interest to us okay and that is what we'll be doing so that's what i illustrated here so in our next video we'll be learning some of the numpy array functions and more importantly we'll learn linear algebra in numpy when you have a matrix how to find the determinant inverse transpose trace rank 
and what have you. So see you in the next lesson. This is getting interesting, right? And you have to be practicing more. So thank you very much and see you in the next lesson.